Welcome to Michael Myers Minute, where we delve into the 1978 horror classic Halloween one minute at a time. I'm your host, Robert Black, and we're on Minute 10. Minute 10 begins with dialogue that is not in the script. We are in the station wagon with Dr. Loomis and Marion Chambers. Marion, you mean you actually never want him to get out? Loomis, never, never. And we get thunder interrupting and I have to wonder, as they're filming in this garage with this car sitting still, did they have a thunder sheet? Was this a practical sound effect? And that's why Loomis repeats never. Or did Donald Pleasance pause and repeat himself and so they added the sound effect later? I actually don't know which one is true. I've never seen a picture of them filming in the garage. Either way, he says never, never. Thunder. He says never again. Marion. And then why are we taking him up to Hardin County if you're just going to walk? And Loomis interrupts her because that is the law. He looks at her and he says, here we are. This is where my notes get weird. And I'm going to talk a little about some behind the scenes stuff here for the Michael Myers Minute. So what I have is a word file. It is the script of the film that I have reformatted slightly to clean up some of it. Because it was copied from a PDF that someone else had. And it's all, as a script should be, Courier New. It's all black. Insert in that are my notes, which are Times New Roman. Inserted also are quotes from the novelization. Those are in Georgia. And then I copied and pasted the IMDb goofs and some trivia notes from IMDb directly into the script. And so they come up as a body condensed. And so you got four different fonts going on. This scene, you get some extra colors, too, because when there's a scene that is intact but out of place, I do a strike through where it is, copy it to the new location, and make it purple. But when there are lines that aren't even in the script, those are red. (laughs) So this minute has black and red. I think the last minute had black, red, and purple. That's all Courier, plus my notes in Times New Roman. There are no... A body condensed things in here from the goofs. There is one. I think the I used a different font. I can't see what font it is on my iPad for the title cards. Smith's Crow of Warren County Sanitarium is for the sign. The Rabbit and Red Lounge Entertainment Nightly. Although the matchbook doesn't say Entertainment Nightly, though the script says it should. So I gotta scroll down a couple pages through a struck through scene. To get to both of them suddenly stare out the windshield in front of them. POV through windshield. Field. And then my notes. About second 17. Through the rain we see a field off to the side of the road. Dimly lit by car headlights are five patients. Dressed in windblown white gowns drenched by the rain. Wandering aimlessly around the field. Actually that's my notes mixed with script notes. That's confusing. But that's my point. (laughs) I'm putting multiple fonts into this, and then when I move it to my iPad so I can read from it, it changes what those fonts are, and so there's still multiple fonts, but they're different ones. Not that you need to know all that. As for the movie, the scene is weird to me, knowing the location where it is. This is a gate to Lake Hollywood, and the street, the road curves around to a gate, and then there's a hill next to it, and on the other side there's trees. I don't know where these patients are standing. There's no field there. There's no open space there. Maybe there were fewer trees at the time, I'm not sure. Interrupting the minute at hand to say, having visited the location and looked around nearby more recently than the rest of this recording, I think the gate used in the film is actually a different one than I have seen cited. Check Instagram, Michael Myers Minute, for some photos and maps. The thing is, the gate that is farther west, just off Cahuenga on Wonderview Drive, has two spots near it that may be the location for the shots of patients wandering around. There are posts of some sort in the foreground of those shots, and two separate locations near the west gate have posts. However, the curve we first see the car driving around is most definitely the curve right by the gate to the east on Lake Hollywood Drive. A shoestring budget, all crew on deck kind of production like this just might have been making use of every little bit of space around that they could. Finding the gate they needed out of the choices, finding the curve they needed out of the choices, finding the open space where they could have patients standing around visibly. Unfortunately, 
neither gate matches exactly the one in the film, with the phone, probably put there for the production, of course, and the low wall to the left under the fence. Also, having recently taken photos of these reservoir gates, it might be on some sort of watch list. So, I hope you appreciate it. Now, back to the minute as previously recorded. It's a strange thing when you get to locations and double-checking them. But anyway, from the script, interior station wagon, Marion, since when do they let them wander around? And then I gotta scroll down through some more struck-through stuff, because the scene has been moved. Uh, Loomis tells her to pull up to the main gate. Shouldn't we just... He interrupts her. Uh, go on, move. He's a little pushy. This part's actually interesting for me, though, because in the script, Loomis gets out of the car, speaks to one of the patients, and it's in repeating the patient that Loomis first calls Michael evil. This is the exchange when Loomis returns to the car. From the script. Marion, what did he say? Loomis, he asked me if I could help him find his purple lawnmower. Marion, I don't think this is any time to be funny. Loomis, he said something else. It's all right now, he's gone, the evil's gone. Loomis gets back in the car. Loomis, stop here. The script actually labels the street as Sanitarium Drive. I don't think it's suggesting that's the name of it, but it is labeled that way. Uh, Marion slows down, and she says, shouldn't we go up to the hospital? He says, wait. He gets out of the car for the first time in the film, for the second in the script, and he heads for the gate. In second 59, through the rear window, we see a shape spring up out of the darkness, streak through the rain, and leap up on the rear of the station wagon. That's from the script. He is lit by the red tail lights and accompanied by a musical stinger. And in the commentary track, Jamie Lee Curtis, not only does she say this moment still scares her, even though she knows it's coming, but in the commentary track, you can hear her getting ready for, she's like, it's coming, it's coming. And I imagine John Carpenter was stifling his laughter a bit. But it's a good shot. And the musical stinger makes it work. The shape, Michael, is patient, gets up onto the roof of the car, and the minute ends. That is all for Minute 10. Michael Myers Minute is a production of Lemming Drops Studio. You can find more content at lemmingdrops.com. You can stalk me on Twitter and Facebook at Myers Minute or Instagram Michael Myers Minute. Or join our Facebook listeners group, 45 Lampkin Lane. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a nice review if you like what you hear. Until next time. See you later. Bye.